I bet with Interbet only. They're a fantastic site. I've never had any issues with them. They are very professional. There's never a problem. You deposit money, two seconds later it's in your account. You withdraw, which I do very occasionally. And uh, I believe it's also two seconds it's in your account. Race nine on the card is the Riding High Together Gold Bracelet Grade 2 over 2,000 metres. It's Gilbert Hoppos 5. It's the penultimate race on the programme. We've got a rerun of Happy Chance running second in the Ridgemont Garden Province Stakes and an interview with Glenn Cotson. Mrs. Browning towards the inside, Silver Sanctuary. They're coming from everywhere. Double Grand Slam's trying to close in. Happy Chance is running a big race at Humding over the last 200 metres. And here's Happy Chance now coming into the lead. Raskova's charging late and Humding is fighting right back. Humdinger and Happy Chance. Humdinger, Pierce Stratum, a brilliant ride from Happy Chance in second. Yeah, so when the noms came out, uh, it's sort of like great minds... Great, great minds never differ. And fool, what's a great minds think alike and fools never differ? Both Sandy and I like were thinking, and uh, she phoned me up. She said, "Have you seen the field for the group two? I said, "I know what you're thinking. Are we going to nominate?" So we supplemented. Uh, obviously, we didn't get the draw. We were hoping for a draw because, um, you know, it definitely does help that with a filly that's quite headstrong. But she's the type of filly that, within two strides, she's out the pins. Nothing can beat out the pins, and she'll be there for nothing. Um, uh, my thought was, she's done enough for the season, she doesn't have to run again, but it's so hard when you look at the, the Cape program. There's not much for the four-year-old fillies, so if you go the Group 1 mile, uh, your next step is to go the Group 1 1800, the paddock stakes. And if you don't do the paddock stakes, she doesn't see up the distance, then we've got to think of running you know, here and then probably the, the, the Group 1 mile in Johannesburg. So, <laughs> I just want to see if she stays. She's fitting well. If she stays the 1800, it opens up the doors for maybe even possibly running in the Met, but definitely running in the in the paddock stakes. So that's what we we, we are to test to see uh, where we're going with her for the next season. Yeah, so I mean, she ran a cracker in the in the Group One, where she got beat a short head. Um, took the longest way around. Uh, the winner came you know, from draw one and, went and beat us down the inside. We had to go right around the field and uh, at the top of the straight, and, and she was flying at them. Very disappointing in the next run because uh, the instructions was drop her out. You've no pressure. She'll run on. They'll be going really quick. And Samanga so Summer ended up running three wide pulling like a dentist. Uh, blame the bitterness is the same bit that we've always had on her. So yeah, it was an unfortunate run, but she is a quirky filly and she can do that now and again. Richard does know her really well, um, and I think it's going to be the same thing, just drop her out. She likes it. Uh, she likes to run at them. I'm sure they're going to go a decent pace in that race, and uh, she'll be flying at them. She's very well in herself. I think she just makes her own bad luck. She's just always a story with her, but she's got loads of talent. Well, it is a big question. Will Raskova stay 2,000 metres? And as you heard there from Glenn Cotson, it's pretty much an experiment, planning for the future. Perhaps she will stay. But the interesting thing for me, Dees, yes. is the comment that he made that Raskova is very quick out the gates and will get a soft lead. Now, I'm not sure about that because I don't believe they're going to ride Red Palace uh, the way that she was ridden in the Ridgemont Garden province. She runs her best races when allowed to dictate, and I think Red Palace is going to search for the lead as well. So I don't think it's a given that Raskova is going to get a soft lead. I think Red Palace is going to go out and look for the lead because I think that's the way she runs her best races. Nice to see Happy Chance bouncing back to her best form in the Garden province, sponsored by Ridgemont, when running a very close second to Humding. And I think the key race to her chances here is if you go back to January when she ran third beaten less than a length in the paddock stakes over 1800 meters at grade one level. If she's progressed, if she's gone forward out of the, of the Garden Province stakes, then I think she's gonna prove a very tough nut to crack here. She's a daughter of dynasty. She should have no problems with the 2000 meters. She's proven herself at grade one level. I do think the older horses probably hold the upper hand, even though there's a ton of money coming for Stuart Pettigrew's three-year-old daughter of uh, Rafif beating wings, who finished third in the Will Lavington, behind Hold My Hand, who ran second in the Will Lavington, and Glenn is right. Hold My Hand had to circle the field at the top of the lane, was very unlucky, in fact, not to win that. Uh, but the, as he said, there's always a whole book full of excuses when it comes to Hold My Hand. Uh, but Richard Faree rides uh, 
uh, the daughter of gold standard and he's only ridden her four times before and won twice on her so hold my hand has only ever won two races and both of those two races was when richard Ferri was riding her so i think the four-year-old's red palace happy chance hold my hand to a lesser degree perhaps sarki Interesting runners are the three-year-olds beating Wings and Raskova, uh, but I'm going to rely on the fact that Happy Chance will have progressed from the Ridgemont Garden Province Stakes. Looking at the run in the Paddock Stakes, I do think that Happy Chance could be the one. I think this is probably the toughest race in the card, uh, but could be the one they all have to beat. You know, how confident can you be if you are going in a pick six and you are going into race number nine? I don't think you can be confident with any of your selections unless you've got the field here. But as Graham mentioned, uh, happy chance. Looks like the right horse in the race. I'm in agreement. Massive runner. Horse number 14, hold my hand. If I'm pushed for a top selection, personally, I think 12 to 1, the way the bookmakers have priced up the fixed odds betting market with number 14, hold my hand. 12 to 1 looks the very generous price about this filly. Uh, purely on that run in uh, the Will Lavington, if you look at a runner like Beating Wings, is 2.5 kg, he's better off. I just want to give you some input about Beating Wings. Uh, Graham mentioned their support for the filly. Well, she is quietly fancied by the stable. Uh, they had options with uh, where they're going to race her and planning of a horse's career. It could have been the Garden Province. It couldn't even been a nomination for the Hollywood Bets Durban in July, but on the advice of Stuart Pettigrew, uh, he had this race earmarked for the filly, and uh, this is where she is now. She is at a race where uh, it was an aim for her, and we know Stuart Pettigrew, master tactician, he's had a lot of good horses go through his hands. He knows how to get the, uh, the job done when it comes to these feature races. So. We'll see how the 3 old goes, number six, beating Wings. Uh, number one, Future Girl. Well, if you go three runs back on that run, I think she comes into it behind Sarki. Uh, and then uh, Sarki will have to get a mention from me, Graham, because I know how luckless she was at a penultimate start. But last time out, well, she was given every chance by Corny Offer. She couldn't get past Red and Maple. So my selections here, yeah, I'm going to give you uh, numerical order rather than order of preference. 6, 10, 15, and 14. 6, 10, 15, and 14. But if I'm pushed for a top choice, Graham, it's going to be Hold My Hand. Well, Hold My Hand is certainly very much alive. And talk about Stuart Pettigrew, uh, just to mention uh, that the joke in the pack could be number four, Gilded Butterfly. If you watch a rerun of the Will Abington where she got taken out and then not persevered with by Gavin Arena. So don't read anything into the 15 links behind. Go watch that replay. You'll see that the door just shut on her. She was squeezed out. Gavin Arena pulled her out the race and didn't persevere with her. She's better than that. And it's one that you might want to consider for your trifectas and quartet. So you've heard uh, these are selections for me. The winner will be either number nine, Red Palace, number 10, Happy Chance, or number 14, Hold My Hand. It's Donovan Everture from Cape Racing and uh, I'd just like to say it's an absolute pleasure to be involved with uh, Intrabet and Cape Readers in this, uh, in this golf day today here at Pearl Valley. Um, it's fantastic for the industry to see all the relevant stakeholders coming down and having a good time and networking and it's exactly what the, the industry needs right now in terms of moving forward and recreating some positivity to take us forward into the next year.